Hello, yes, so Mr. Wall here. Hope the video finds you fit and well. Um, the next three lessons we're going to finish off the reproduction topic. Lessons six, seven, and eight will all be about plant reproduction. Now, all three lessons will be on this particular PowerPoint, but the videos will be once again three separate videos for three separate lessons. Um, please note that the videos will now be uploaded to my YouTube channel, Wolf Wall Physics. Um, a number of people are having difficulties opening video and I think YouTube might be a little bit easier for you guys to actually access. At the end of the lesson you'll be directed towards a caboodle activity which will assess and hopefully put right anything that you've misunderstood from these three lessons, it should say there. Um, you will then be directed towards a practical practice test rather and then the test. Uh, which will act as a kind of assessment. You're used to doing that as normal part of your homeworks when we do these units. Okay then, reproduction in plants. Uh, the first lesson is entitled Flowers and Pollination. That should be the title that goes into your book or into your notes. And you can find information about this lesson in Activate Book 1 pages 50 to 51 or on the aforementioned YouTube channel, Wolf Wall Physics, and the video will be titled Flowers and Pollination. The first lesson, uh, you should be able to identify the main structure of a flower, so the parts and what those parts do, describe the process of pollination, and describe the difference between wind-pollinated plants and insect-pollinated plants. Okay, so the first thing that you need to be able to do is to identify the parts of a flower and be able to tell what those jobs are, the various parts. Uh, the first thing you should realise that a plant, unlike most animals, has male and female parts. The male part is referred to as the stamen, and if you think about the end of that word there, men, and men are males, this represents the male part of the flower. It consists of an anther, top here, which is supported by a filament. Now it's the anther that produces the male gametes, or pollen. Remember in humans <coughs> or animals, the male gamete is the sperm cell. So pollen is the plant equivalent of the sperm cell. The female part is called the carpal, and the carpal consists of a stigma, a style, and an ovary down here. Now the ovary contains the ovules or eggs and they are the female gametes as you can imagine. Very similar then in name to uh, the female gametes in animals. So ovules, eggs. You've then got the style which is supporting the stigma. Now if you remember that the stigma is sticky, sticky stigma, it will help you to remember what the stigma does. Its job is actually to catch grains of pollen. Okay, and we'll find out why that's necessary in a moment. The first thing I'd like you to do, however, is to make a copy of the diagram above. So either draw it by hand and list the function of the parts of the flower on the right hand side here, or you can download a little uh, diagram, which again you will need to label and Give the functions of the various parts. So if you pause the video now, give yourself 10-15 minutes or so to do that. Okay, so how does reproduction in plants actually happen? Well, for reproduction to occur, the male sex cell, pollen, must join with the female sex cell, just like sperm must meet egg in animal reproduction. The transfer of pollen to the stigma, remember the stigma is the one that catches the pollen, the female part of the plant, is called pollination. And poll pollination can occur in two main ways, either by transfer by animals or transfer by the wind. Some plants are able to self-pollinate, but we're really only interested in pollination produced by insects and the wind. Under the title, How Does Reproduction Happen?, uh, I would like you to draw up a table, which you see on the left hand side here with the column headings. And then what I'd like you to do is to write down the characteristics 
of plants which are designed to be pollinated by insects and then write down the characteristics of those plants are designed which are designed to be pollinated by the wind. So let me give you a list of characteristics and give you a couple of examples. So um, if a plant is brightly coloured, it's sweet and has sweet smelling petals, it's designed like that to attract insects. So that plant would be attracting insects. So the insects would come along and transfer pollen away from that particular plant. So that would be an example of a characteristic which relies on insects to pollinate the plant. The second statement here, anthers. Now if you remember, the anthers are the parts where the pollen are. So the anthers contain the pollen. If they hang on the outside of the plants, then they're more likely to be wind pollinated. So the wind can blow against the anthers and transfer the pollen away again. Okay, so we're always interested in trying to get pollen away from the parent plant. So if again, once you've got that table drawn up, if you pause the video, um, in pencil if you wish, put each of these statements under the appropriate heading in the table. Again, pause the video, give yourself 10 minutes or so to do that, and we'll go through the solutions. Okay, hopefully you got on with that okay. Um, here are the solutions then. Insect pollinated plants, as we mentioned earlier, tend to be brightly coloured, sweet smelling to attract the insects. This sweet, sugary type substance there, again is there, called nectar, is again there to attract insects. Bees love it. Uh, Pollen is sticky or spiky, so it sticks to the uh, fur of the creature which has gone into the plant, for example, a bee. Um, small amounts of pollen produced by insect pollinating plants and insect pollinated plants, again, have sticky stigmas. Wind pollinated plants, again, as we mentioned earlier, the anthers tend to be outside. They produce large amounts of pollen because an awful lot of it is lost in its journey away from the parent plant. Um, the stigma hangs outside the flower, so again, it's easier for the pollen to land on the stigma via the wind. Uh, as with insect pollinated plants, the stigma is sticky. Uh, they often have small petals, often dull or green. They don't need to be brightly coloured because they're not trying to attract insects. And again, if you want this pollen to travel a long distance, you want it to be very light, to so have a very small mass. Okay, could you please correct your table, make sure that you've got everything in there and everything's correct. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. Um, you should be able to identify the different parts of a flower and what those different parts do. You should be able to tell me what is meant by the term pollination. And you should be able to tell me how different plants are adapted according to how they are pollinated.